Hello and welcome to the Inferno. I'm your host, Taya Vitek, and here with me today is our panel featuring Johnny Soto, Trevor Miglarino, and Lucas Robbins. Saturday was the homecoming game at Sun Devil Stadium, where ASU absolutely dismantled the Washington Huskies, earning a 53-24 victory. This loss cost the Huskies their number 20 ranking and has the Devils once again knocking on the door. Panel, how did ASU pull this off? Yeah, Taylor Kelly and the Sun Devils just came out of nowhere to dismantle Washington's defense. As we see here, towards the end of the first half, Kelly throwing one of his two touchdown passes to tight end Chris Coyle to put the Sun Devils up by a score of 29-7. to The Sun Devils then went on to score 24 more points in the second half and win by a score of 53-24. to Trevor, how'd the defense look? Well, the defense looked real good, Johnny. The Arizona State defense finally looked as good as they do on paper against Washington State finally. last Saturday. I know. ASU defense Bishop held Bishop Sankey and company to a net total of negative five rushing yards. The defense also had seven sacks on the Huskies, as well as 12 tackles for a loss. Boom! How's that for some stats? The Sun Devils forced the Huskies to punt a lot, which is something they are not used to doing. For more on this game and the next, we head to Lucas for an in-depth analysis. What do you have for us, Lucas? Well, looking ahead, the Sun Devils' schedule, there are no easy games remaining. Mm -hmm. That win over Washington was impressive, but the Sun Devils have a tough road ahead. Not having game Saturday is going to give ASU some extra days to prepare for Washington State, but the Devils still have to play a dangerous game against Utah in Salt Lake City, a season deciding crucial matchup with UCLA, and you never know about that U of A game. Anything mm -hmm. can happen. Taya? Thanks, guys. There were some other great Pac-12 matchups last week. Johnny, tell me a little bit more about what happened when Oregon took on Washington State. This game was actually close during the first half. The Cougars only trailed by 10 points at the end of two quarters. Then the Ducks just took off in the second half, outscoring Washington State 28-14. to The Ducks ended up winning by a score of 62-38. to Marcus Mariota threw for over 327 yards and two touchdowns for the Ducks. Connor Halliday had an impressive game for the Cougars with 557 yards and four touchdowns. However, he also had four interceptions. Trevor, how'd the UCLA-Stanford game turn out? Well, Stanford trucked the Trojans last Saturday 24-10 after Stanford's ridiculous loss to Utah two weeks ago. Prior to the Stanford game, UCLA averaged over 200 yards on the ground. The Cardinal was able to hold UCLA to a mere 74 yards rushing, along with 192 yards to keep UCLA under 300 total yards in the game. Prior to this game, UCLA averaged over 500 yards a game. That's making a statement. US UCLA faces number one ranked Oregon, while Stanford will face Oregon State tomorrow. Lucas, what do you have for us, my friend? Well, USC was on the road last week against Notre Dame for the first time since the firing of head coach Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. So here we go to South Bend for one of the best rivalries in college football. Silas Red carries. He's in for the score, and the Trojans are going to draw blood first. He would lead the Trojans in rushing. But Tommy Reese and the Irish were quick to answer back. He finds his tight end Troy Nicholas in the end zone. Ref says it's six, and he's going to do a little celebration dance with the big boy here. So now we go to the fourth. Trojans down four. Cody Kessler looking to make something happen. He finds the receiver, Nelson Aguilar, but he gets stuck, and it's incomplete. He just gets lit up on that play. The Irish hang on to win, 14-10. What's up next, Taya? All right, thanks, guys. Let's see how the rest of the Pac-12 did. Torrance Dunham has the scores for us. Torrance? Thanks, Taya. Let's take a look at the scores. That Let's take a look at the rest of the scores. Charleston Southern beat by the Colorado Buffaloes 43-10. Utah in Tucson gets destroyed by the Wildcats 35-24. And Oregon State all over California, not a surprise, 49-17. Taya? Sounds like the Pac-12 had an interesting week. Torrance, how did it affect the standings? Well, Sun Devil fans rejoice. The Devils are on top. Th uh, UCLA is in second, followed by the Wildcats, USC, Utah, and Colorado bringing up the bottom. And now let's take a look at the North. The two Oregon teams sit on top, followed by number six ranked Stanford, the two Washingtons, and Cal. Taya? Thanks, Torrance. This week is featuring some more good matchups, starting with number 12 UCLA at number three Oregon. UCLA is coming off their first loss of the season, and Oregon's still undefeated. Panel, who has the advantage? I believe that the Ducks will literally run away with this game because UCLA had trouble stopping the run last week, and it ultimately cost them their first loss of the season. Also, Oregon will be playing at home. Trevor, do you have the birds winning? I do. Good call there, Johnny. Oregon has too explosive, and their offense can, has yet to been stopped this year, so I don't think UCLA is up to that task. Yeah, same as you guys. You know the story. Oregon yeah. is just too mm -hmm. fast. I think they beat the Bruins convincingly. All right, next up, number six, Stanford visits Corvallis to play number 25, Oregon State. Both teams are six and one, and Stanford is favored by a mere three and a half points. Clearly, Stanford needs to continue to prove themselves after that loss to Utah, even though they beat UCLA last week. Guys, who do you have? 
This is going to be a good game on both sides. Both teams are evenly matched. However, I believe Stanford will win this game because they are number six in the nation for a reason. They can run the ball on you, and they can also beat you in the AO game if they need to. Also, that defense is pretty tough to score against. Trevor, what does the fro yeah, have to that, say? That's a good pick, but the fro is going to go with the upset and a pick ah. Oregon State due to the leadership of Sean Manion. Yeah, no, don't let Oregon State's record fool you. Yeah, they you still go. lost to Eastern Washington, and don't expect the Beavers to be pulling a Utah. Cardinal going to win big. All right, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Now let's look at the youths playing at USC. Neither team is currently ranked, and both have been struggling with consistency. Vegas has the Trojans prevailing, but let's see what the guys think. Guys? Both of these teams have identical records, although I believe that USC will win because the team feels more revamped with Ed Orgeron at the helm, and it looks like the team is playing with a lot more confidence. Trevor? Yep, USC takes the game here because it's home for them, and they're doing well under the new leadership. Yeah, y'all are right. Coach O is the X Factor, and the energy surrounding the Trojans has been refreshed. The Trojans will have some fun beating down on the youths. Yeah, yeah you like yeah. my Trojan there? Yes, yeah, real creative. Yeah, nice. good. Thank you. Thank you. So ASU won't be playing a game this Saturday. The team's getting a little bit of an extended and not to mention well-deserved break before they play again on Halloween night against Washington State. Panel, who do you think will come out on top? The Sun Devils haven't been good on the road this year, but I believe they'll get their first road win of the year since the offense is just too hot right now and the defense looks to be stopping the run and the pass quite well as of recently. Yeah, is it even a question at this no. point, Johnny? As long as the defense continues to be dominant and Taylor Kelly can orchestrate the offense, the Sun Devils will have no problem winning this game. Yeah, yeah Trevor, you're exactly right about the defense and TK. If the Sun Devils want to smell roses, they mm -hmm. can't lose again. This won't be a gimme, but ASU still has a lot to prove. ASU. I'm going to have to agree with you guys. ASU will definitely come out on top. But that's all the time we have this week. I'm Taya Vitek, and thanks for watching The Inferno. And as always, go double.